Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we're working on a 2007 Pontiac G6. Customer complaint is you got the P0335 code, crankshaft position sensor signal fault. And he said that uh, the RPM doesn't work, the uh, tachometer, so you can't relearn the new sensor. He brought the original sensor in the box, BWD, broken when delivered, right? But hey, made in Japan, wow, that must be a good one. Let's plug in the scanner, see how this thing starts up and runs, and take it from there. All right, let's jump right in. It's got the 2.4 liter, four-cylinder engine. And just do a full code scan. See what this thing comes up with. All right, we got some four engine codes, two airbag codes. All right, that was pretty quick. P0326, NOx sensor performance. Now, read the description here. Test failed since DTC clear. History DTC not passed since power up. Warning indicator requested. There's the 335, crankshaft position sensor circuit. Current DTC, test not passed since cleared. Warning indicator requested. Fuel tank pressure sensor circuit low voltage. Current DTC, fuel level sensor circuit high voltage, current DTC. Okay, so those four codes, and the airbag has some history DTCs in it. Not worried about the other ones. So these four codes, let's start it up, see what it does. Long crank time for sure. RPMs are at zero. Fuel gauge is at zero. All right, so codes are believable. And if we go into our engine menu and look at the data, engine RPM indeed stuck at zero. So we are worried about this engine RPM signal. So where would you go from here? And the question is, are all these codes related? May or may not be. History of the vehicle is, it did have some wiring damage from rodents and it was repaired, the customer said, I think a year ago and everything was fine. Now these problems are starting to come back. So the question is, was the repair, the wiring repair done well or not? But let's focus on one of the problems, the crankshaft position sensor circuit. Uh, we can look up some information right on the scanner. Go into our guided component tests. Fuel injection, CKP sensor, component information, Okay, it's a three wire sensor, five volt reference, low reference in the signal. Location at component test connector or at the ECM, located left side lower engine block area just above oil pan and near the transmission bell housing. The customer said he needed to take off the starter to get to it. So it might not be the easiest test location, but we need to get to these wires and check the, uh, the three wires, five volt, reference and signal. So let's get in the shop and see what the scope says. All right, doing a visual inspection here. I think I see the wiring to the sensor right there. You see a yellow, a light green, and I think a purple. And yes, that is some bare wiring and I think a buck connector. So 
that must be where the wiring damage occurred. So the wiring colors match. Uh, let's get a scope on these things. Oh man. <laughs> this might be a little easier than I thought. There's more wiring damage and I see a wire just completely bare. I think it's the light green so we're gonna have to either get under here or get through here and and there's more take care of this wiring and then fix it up and see if see if uh, that fixes the problem because I think the problem is right there well I got that electrical tape off the wires they're all oily and gunky but we definitely see that the light green wire is broken and the light green is our 5 volt reference so before going for the repair let's just reconnect the green wire and see if our RPM signal comes back that will at least verify that this is the only problem and we can quote the customer accurately now what I would do is redo all those connections unplug the sensor get the wires out do a nice clean repair and that way this problem won't happen in the future alright quick and dirty two piercing probes one on the harness side one on the sensor side and a lead jumping those together go right back into our scanner see if we get our tax signal back key on data display engine RPM and yay we got RPM signal okay so that's problem one separate issue from the knock sensor or the, the fuel level fuel pressure sensor whatever so we're gonna fix this up and I'm gonna ask the customer does he want me to go further since these problems are not related so one thing I want to check before repairing these pigtails is the resistance from the knock sensor connector to the wire past this crappy junction. And it seems to be okay, 0 0.5 ohms, but the knock sensor itself had a lot of oil in the connector. I had to blow it out. I mean, it was dripping out of there, so if uh, you know, this won't fix the knock sensor code, you'll need a new knock sensor for sure just because it's oil logged. And that would definitely mess with the uh, the signals. But let's repair this, take it for a test drive, do the crankshaft variation relearn since you put in a new sensor, and see what codes come come back, and do a quick diag on the uh, fuel level sensor and also the fuel tank pressure sensor. So just a quick shot of the repair process. We got the little clamps holding up the connector here and then a little clip holding the wire together I already have the heat shrink cut so all we do is get some solder heat up the wire itself and flow some good old Radio Shack solder around the wire beautiful Very nice, clean solder connections, no butt splices or, you know, messy connectors. And also we're going to do the connector for the knock sensor down here, this little guy, and tape everything up and uh, basically clear the codes and see how this thing runs. And for this thing, since we do, we're working in the shop, I'm using the, the Hacko uh, FX888D soldering station. 450 degrees seems to be a very nice 
sweet spot for this thing. So if you don't have a nice bench top soldering iron, uh, this is my favorite and I've tried quite a few. So check it out at the Amazon store. All right, got everything taped up in 3M electrical tape. So the those are the three wires right there going to the crank sensor and the brown wire goes to the knock sensor. So that's it. Let's close the hood, get the scanner out, take this thing for a test drive. All right, let's jump right into our codes menu. So we have the four codes, just clear them out. Clear codes, yes. No codes present. Let's go to functional tests. CKP variation relearn. Continue. 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 Brake pedal not applied. Continue. Sorry, engine wide open throttle. All right, successful. So let's take, take this thing for a spin. And what I want to look at in engine data is A, the RPMs, make sure that's not dropping out. And B, this knock sensor signal. If we have it, spark advance, engine oil pressure, just look at spark advance and see if the codes, uh, the knock sensor code comes back or not. Test driving this thing, good power, good shifting, check engine lights right back on. So, I'm sure some codes are left. Let's uh, pull over and scan it for codes. All right, right back into the codes. Yep, we just have two codes left. Fuel tank pressure sensor, circuit low voltage, and fuel level sensor, circuit high voltage. So for this thing, I want to pull up a wiring diagram and see if they're tied together. Uh, is there a common a common thread here? Because what are the chances of two sensors failing at the same time? Slim to none. So in this uh, EVAP data stream, we can see both the fuel tank level and the fuel tank pressure. So fuel tank levels is zero, zero percent remaining and tank pressure volts is 0, 0.00 so that's definitely the low voltage code um, so this is the data stream we're going to use to troubleshoot the uh, fuel system problem alrighty looking at some wiring diagrams we have our fuel tank pressure sensor right here three wires and they all go to the engine control module there's a low reference, 5 volt, and the signal in the middle. And they go through this intermediate C413 connector. So um, let's look at the fuel level sensor. Again, we have a black and white. That's the low reference to the ECM and then the fuel level sensor signal is a purple wire goes to this potentiometer so just two wires and again they both go through this C413 intermediate connector so that looks like a good common place to test these signals and wires if we look up the connector view it's a 10 pin connector and I printed out the wires here 
So the black and white and purple are for the fuel level sensor signal. And then for the fuel tank pressure, we have our 5 volt reference, the signal, and this orange and black, it goes to a tan wire, low reference. So five wires all together, the fuel pump works, so we don't need to worry about that. So we'll focus on these guys here. And the connector itself is conveniently right here in front of the fuel tank. Pull the little clip off, obviously it's all wet, but we can do our checks right here and I see that there has been some wiring repair done at this point also. So that is promising. We'll do the checks, you know, there's the purple wire. We'll do the checks right here and if there's no signal coming from the engine computer, we can almost assume that the problem's right, right in this area where the repairs were done. We'll go a little upstream, see if we get a signal there. So let's do some checks. Okay, with the key on, the first thing we're checking is the fuel level sensor signal wire. It's this purple one, and you can see it's already at 5 volts on the harness side. There you go, 4.96. So now let's check the ground which is right next door. It is the orange and black. Okay. And that looks to be good. However, we can load that ground with a test light coming from battery positive. And our test light definitely works. So if we touch the signal pin with our test light, there's definitely a good ground on there. So it looks like we have signal and ground to this fuel uh, level sensor. Interesting. So it looks like the wiring is good to hear. Now let's do the checks on the uh, fuel tank pressure sensor too. And by the way, to rule out the connector, you want to check on the actual fuel tank side. And on the signal wire, we have the same 5 volts. So the wiring is good all the way to here and we'll also check the ground of course with a test light yes we still have good ground on the fuel tank side for the fuel level sensor so Unfortunately, the tank has to come down, and apparently that sending unit is is no longer good, or there's a wiring problem on top of the tank. But either way, the customer said, just go this far, and uh, he'll take it from there. So for the fuel tank pressure sensor, we're on the gray wire, which is the 5 volt reference, and again, we have steady 5 volts, so that's good. Um, next is dark green is the actual signal and orange and black is going to be our ground so let's go for orange and black first looks like that's a good ground test light lights up see that the ground is good and actual signal now I'm back probing this because I don't want to poke any holes in the wires because this connector lives in a very crappy spot it looks like the pressure signal is 0 0.4 volts so if we go to our scanner is that 
what the data was showing. Look, tank pressure 0.4. Remember before it was showing 0.0. .0. .0. Hmm. Did we fix something? Before it was it was definitely setting a code. So could it be a bad sensor still and it just woke up? Yes. However, we did mess with this wiring a little bit. So if we go back to our scope and we can change the scale here. Yeah, see the live reading. I'm gonna fiddle with these wires. It's definitely jumping around. Point five, point four. That doesn't seem to be good. Plug this connector. Should drop to zero. Doing a visual inspection, all looks clean. Let's go back to our scanner. So that's when I unplugged it, it went to zero. Now we're to like 0.3. So go figure. <laughs> Could there be a wiring problem in the vicinity? Like on top of the tank somewhere? Perhaps, do a little more poking. Well, I guess that's it for this one. The customer declined any further diagnostics. Doesn't want to drop the tank, mess with that right now. But at least we proved the wiring integrity to that bulk connector near the tank is good. Uh, we fixed the crankshaft position sensor wiring, relearned that, it starts up great, runs fine. So, this point we'll ship it. So, thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for more and uh, See you next time. Bye-bye. All right, a little bonus footage. Who noticed the inconsistency uh, in the initial call on the NOx sensor wiring? The NOx, that wasn't the NOx sensor. That was the oil pressure sensor. NOx sensor is actually two wires, and it lives right next to the oil pressure sensor. <laughs> so they have three sensors in one spot here. If you zoom in, that's the wire that we uh, repaired again. That's for the oil pressure sensor. And then that bolt right there, that's the NOx sensor. And I checked the wiring. The pigtail's actually right here, that blue two-wire connector. And I don't see any other problems with it. The code didn't return. So, you know, I'm not going to charge the customer for, uh, for that one. We'll just tell them the code was there history code, cleared it out, see if it returns. Um, but I was just wondering who caught that uh, little inconsistency in the initial diagnosis.